A quick thank you to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Cat Crab Lobster, Dark Machine, Try Again 95, Astray the Dreamer, Mezik, Udic Joel, German Chemist, Casper Arnholtz, and Chaos to Must. Thank you very much. Story number one. Testing on Humans, written by Original Rich Game. The Cersei race was naturally inquisitive. They would usually travel to multiple pre-space planets to observe the people there, but the humans were different. They saw the humans as a major threat to the wider galaxy and set up a research station near a few islands on one of the more sparsely populated continents. They tested on humans and saw them being a space-sparing civilization in the next 2,000 years. Also, if their advanced rate of technological advancement continued. From what they could tell, the continent nearest to them didn't have a system of writing and lived mostly in a tribal state. Until you got further south. Because of this, they abducted many of the continent and surrounding islands staying far from the eastern continents. More specifically, the one they found to be called Europe by its inhabitants. The Europeans started to arrive. They had arrived a few centuries before according to the notes left by the original researchers, but hadn't returned since and didn't get a chance to spread the knowledge of the area. But now a large wooden ship was arriving and was going directly over the underwater research facility. This was an opportunity too good to miss. They used a tractor beam to effectively sink the ship but leave the air bubble so that they could breathe. After this, many of the Circe started to test in these people and gave them various diseases from around the world, including one called smallpox by the European group. Their leader was very easy to discern from the others for he was very elegantly dressed. However, he died during the testing. Panicking slightly due to the fact that they were going to be related after testing, they removed the memory of the facility and what happened there and let them go. From what they found out, the king of the faction called Spain created a cover-up for the greatest explorer going missing and giving one of the crew members called Christopher Columbus recognition for the discovery. Over the years, sea travel increased and the smallpox they injected into the humans to test their response to infection had created unexpected effects as it wiped out a vast majority of the natives on the near continent. They decided to continue researching, despite the issue that they had mistakenly created, and set up tractor beams in rows of triangles between three islands with the facility at its center. All had been going well. They had taken the ships and hadn't returned them as the new policies, and had successfully taken ships such as the USS Cyclops and the Carol A. Daring. They had also tested how far they could use the tractor beams and their equipment on small flighted groups with primitive aircraft. First, they started to use parts of an asteroid that was heavily magnetic to disrupt the crude pathfinders called compasses. After they were sufficiently lost, they waited until they ran out of fuel to see how much they had and if they could sustain a crash. The dead, survivors, and debris of the aircraft were then taken and tested upon. However, the most audacious thing they had done up to that date was the abduction of two lighthouse keepers and some of their equipment. They were now taking what the humans called super tankers to examine technologies being shipped when humans almost found them. They had created submarines that were now specifically designed to search deep waters, and they had to remove the tractor beams because they got too close too many times. Indeed, the last few centuries of research had told the Circe a lot about humans. They now knew that humans could easily be killed with chemical and biological weapons, and that their skin could absorb and eventually distribute plasma blasts that came out of small arms which had led to a creation of a new armor once synthetic skin was grown. The humans got into space. They were in space for about 500 years, quicker than expected, and were now traveling to their oversized moon on a weekly basis, and had uh, space holidays. They assembled a small stealth laser array. The idea was simple. Wait for the humans to send off a ship near the facility, and use the invisible ladders to disable the engine of the ship. After this, use the facility's tractor beams to bring them in intact. A plan simple enough. What could go wrong? As it turned out, a lot could and did go wrong. First off, the flight was delayed for unknown reasons. 
Then the laser ray broke down after the outer waterproof container cracked. After it was fixed, the flight went off and they had to wait a further year for the exact same flight to repeat. Once it did, the first laser only destroyed the engines of the first stage of the rocket, which had already broken off. And they then got to the second stage. The ship fell and they caught it. But everyone knew where it had fallen exactly, and the humans found the Cersei facility. They had used crazy tactics to get it. They surrounded it with submarines and fired torpedoes at the side of the facility before it could put up its own defenses, despite the fact that they had people there. Then they sent in smaller submarines with soldiers to take the base over. Needless to say, the soldiers were outmatched and outclassed in every way and were lost, but the facility was badly damaged, and they surrendered once they realized the communications array was hopelessly damaged and the next transport was due to arrive in a year. The humans then experimented on the Cersei and reverse-engineered their tech within 70 years. The first contact didn't go exactly well when the Cersei government was presented with what the humans called atrocities of the Bermuda Research Facility. End of story. Story number two. Praise be to the engine. Written by Red Shift Razor. Jeremy, why is it that I never see humans conforming to the standard engineering practices? Um, am I in trouble again? Well, have you done something to be in trouble over? Uh, no. That is conversation for later. Anyways, you haven't answered my question. Why don't humans conform to the standard engineering practices? Well, I'm not an engineer, so, so why ask me? Well, I'll be frank. I cannot hope to understand the human engineers. They have completely different names for the same items and different terms for the same principles. Why so? I do not know. Don't be disheartened, Flop Blob. Most regular humans can't understand engineer lingo anyway. As for why humans don't conform to standard practices, I honestly have no idea. All I know is that they work, but why... As far as anyone can tell, what the human ninjas do is pure nonsense. I have even seen a group of them kneeling down to the engine in supplication. What kind of nonsense is that? Well, um, did the supplication work? Yes, but, um, how? Jeremy chose to lean down and put his hand on Flublob's shoulder, trying to put on his most comforting face. My friend, um, it's best not to question these things. Lest you go mad. After a deep and heavy sigh, Froblob opted to look up again. You know what? You're right. It's best for my sanity just to forget about this issue. Wanna get coffee? Sure, I would love. Warning! Warning! Engine meltdowns estimated within ten minutes. Evacuate now and seek emergency repairs. Jeremy looked over at Froblob, a worried smile adorning his face. Hey, um, Froblob, do we have any life pods in this bay? We've yet to restock after the recent incident with the wild animals being let loose. Ah. Well, um, since it looks like we don't have another choice, why don't we try and fix the engine? Might as well, hmm. Three minutes later, Seri sprinted through the corridors, mentally cursing himself for sleeping through the beginning of an engine emergency. As he approached the engine bay doors, he mentally braced himself for the worst, only to be greeted by a baffling seed. Captain Floblob and Jeremy the human were prostrated in front of the engine, chanting in unison. However, that wasn't even the most surprising sight. Ceres' eye stalks raised in surprise when he saw that the engine was somehow fixed. That most definitely demanded answers. Captain, pardon my language, but what the fuck is going on? The chanting slowed down over the course of ten seconds, becoming quieter and quieter until only the hum of the engines could be heard. Captain Flumlop turned towards Seri, his hands clasped together and head pointed towards the floor. The engine demanded a tribute, therefore we appeased it. Flumlop raised his arms to the ceiling and proclaimed at the top of his voice, Praise be the engine! Praise, replied Jeremy, his arms likewise raised to the ceiling. The two of them returned to prostrating before the engine, much to Ceres' immense confusion. Oh, well, um, I guess I, I can go back to sleep then. 
End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed and...